Hello everyone, this is Amrit Pal Singh. Welcome to the next video. Guys, in this video, I'll be talking about what are the different assumptions of linear regression. In my previous video, I have explained how we can make use of linear regression in the R programming language. But the thing is like we can't blindly apply linear regression to not only any data set, right? We first we have to understand what's the problem statement, what are the requirements, what are the assumptions, then only we have to go for the linear regression. So just to make uh, just to provide more clarity, I'm just coming up with, with this video in which I'll be discussing about the assumptions. So in this uh, here, you can see like here we got a data set with a linear regression applied, right? The first case. That's why I put it mark as a tick. And this linear regression seems to be serving its purpose really well. But if we look at the following three data sets, you can see it here where the cross mark is there, right? Uh, we can see the linear regression is applied each time and in fact, it's exactly the same linear regression as in the first case, right? However, these linear regression are not serving their purpose. In fact, they are misleading, right? So, so, so we shouldn't be using linear regression in those situations. So these four data sets are called as the ENS Combi Quartet, right? So you must be wondering what this ENS Combi Quartet. So ENS Combi Quartet com com comprises of set of four data sets having identical descriptive statistical properties in terms of their mean, variance, correlations and uh, linear regression lines, but having different representation when we scatter plots on the graph. You can see it here when we, actually the, these are all four are will be maybe exhibiting the same mean variance, right? But when we uh, apply the scatter plot, they'll be having different representations. So, so why, why we, what's the need of it, right? So this ENS Combi Quartet is used to illustrate the importance of exploratory data analysis and the drawbacks of depending only on the summary statistics means the meaning is like we don't have to go for the uh, like the implementation just by looking at the summary statistics it also is it also uh, emphasizes the importance of using data visualization to spot the trends outliers like in this case outlier has been shown right there may be an outlier here just see in the third picture right so uh, it also emphasizes the importance of the data visualizations to spot trends outliers and other crucial details that might not be obvious from the summary statistics alone obviously from the numbers from the like whatever you got as a result, we can't able to like uh, figure it out whether we have an outlier available, whether we have some trends coming up, right? So we have to uh, go for this Ambers Combi Quartet, right? This is the point, right? Now let's talk about the assumptions. So what are the assumptions? So in this case, here are a few, uh, here are some of the assumptions. Let's look at them. So there are, there are going to be six assumptions we are having. The very first assumption is linearity. So it means linear relationship between Y and X. You can see it here, they are, we are showing two cases here. If you look at the chart here on the right, right? So in this case, you can see linear regression is misleading. There's actually no relationship between the two variables, right? So we don't, we wouldn't be using this kind of model here. So it means this is okay. The left one, the blue uh, dots, the red, the red one is not okay. So it, because in this case, we have to check for the linearity means what's the linearity we have to check out the li linear relationship between our dependent variable and each independent variable right so let's now uh, discuss the second assumption second assumption is homo de decisity it's just a complex term although but meaning is uh, it's the equal variance so what it means meaning that you don't want to see this cone type shape here that's why you can see the right side there's a cross mark you don't want to see this cone type shape here on the chart whether it's an increasing cone or a decreasing cone so which would mean that variance is dependent on the independent variable so in this case we won't be using the linear regression either right so third variation third assumption is multivariate normality so in this case, uh, if you look at the chart on the right, you can see uh, uh, in this case, uh, what is happening? Uh, we have like implemented, we have just shown the normal distribution of the curves, right? You can see on the left side, we have a normal curve available, right? It's a good one. But then right one is showing two curves here, right? So in this case, what's the, what's the point? So we can see that something is off here something is off here so if you look at the uh, look along the line of linear regression you want to see the normal distribution of your data point in the case of the right here we can see something different coming here so uh, we won't be applying any linear regression in this case if you talk about the fourth case it's called independence so in this case the fourth assumption is independent of observations and this includes the term no autocorrelation 
right so uh, sometimes you will see the assumption uh, like uh, title as a no autocorrelation what it means it's it means that we don't want to see any kind of pattern in our data you can see there's a pattern available you can see there's a pattern available that's how we put a, a cross mark here let's take one example uh, the example can be a stock market where the previous prices affect the future prices and which affect the future prices and so on so in this case we wouldn't be apply any linear regression model right so fifth case is it's a lack of multi uh, co linearity in this case the predictors the uh, variables independent variables are not correlated with each other so in this case uh, uh, if they are in this case this is the point we are looking for like this is a right mark it means in this case uh, like they are they are not correlated so we can build up the linear correlation so in this case if they are correlated then we do proceed and build a linear regression model then the coefficient estimates that we get in the model will become unreliable so in this case we have to go for this one in which uh, they are no no correlated then we can go with the uh, we can we can go building a linear regression and last one is outlier check i hope you all are clear with the outlier outlier means which is the like extreme value so in this case uh, it is important to keep in mind while building up the linear regression model to keep this uh, outlier check if you look at the chart here on the right you can see the outlier is significantly affecting the linear regression that we get you can see this is a point where i have uh, put this exclamation mark it's a outlier we are having and it is affecting the linear regression line that we get so some something uh, we can do we want to consider is we have to remove the outlier before building the linear regression right so this is the like uh, this is the point like which i want to uh, discuss today like uh, we don't have to apply blindly the linear regression sometime we have to go for some assumption some clarity need to be needed so that we can like don't be uh, like na stuck up in some trap or we got stuck in some problem so this is a very important stuff you have to understand uh, the assumptions of the linear regression i hope you must have uh, understood from this today's video this this little theoretical concept in next video i'll be talking about the multiple case like here in the uh, previous video today's video i've just talk about linear regression we'll talk about the multi regression like in which we are having uh, instead of affecting only one variable we'll be having more independent variables which is giving us the which is affecting the dependent variable so thanks for watching guys see you next video